Wow. This look inside the Apple Vision Pro enables us to learn things that would otherwise be nearly impossible without destroying the device. But the Neptune CT scanner that we just got lent from LumaField does so much more than just spit out a 2D image like this one. It can stitch together hundreds or even thousands of 2D x-rays into a full 3D model. Come over and take a look. Oh, look at this. Here's all the little magnets for the optional Zeiss lenses. Here's the worm drives for the automatic IPD adjustment. We've actually got a really cool one where we isolated those components so we can see the whole mechanism. And if you look closely in this view, you can see every single BGA solder joint on the chips on the board. Pretty darn impressive for not removing any of the screws, which by the way, are conveniently much easier to find now if we wanted to take the iFixit approach. And depending on the tuning, which we're gonna talk about in more depth later, we can even zoom in far enough, check this out, check this out, look at this, that we can see this message from our sponsor, Thorum. Check out their rings, watches, and necklaces made from unique materials like Gibeon Meteorite and ethically sourced antlers. You can check them out at the link below and use code LTT to get 20% off. Without looking too closely at the spoilers behind me, let's do that again, but this time with a Sony DualSense controller because it really shows off both the power and the versatility of the Neptune CT scanner. Like before, we're gonna mount our device to foam, chuck it in the machine, close the hatch, and enable the x-rays. I don't think that's ever gonna get old. Once all that's done, we get this view. You can think of this less like a picture and more like a shadow of the controller, but instead of a light shadow, it's an x-ray shadow. So the lighter areas here are where the less dense materials like plastic allow much of the x-ray radiation to pass through to our sensor. The darker areas, like these ones, are the denser, usually metal parts, like these screws or these giant vibration motors that much more effectively block our photons. We then take hundreds of these images from different angles and upload them to LumaField's Voyager cloud platform, which does a bunch of maths to spit out this. And I don't think this is ever gonna get old either. This is so cool. This scan would have taken a couple of hours and you can actually see here, we can flip our way through all of the raw x-rays that made up our 3D image. Then, by moving the attenuation slider, we can look at the different densities of materials in the controller. For instance, if we slide it all the way over, we can see the air around the controller. And then going the other way, it removes the plastic first, and then we can keep on going until it's broken down to just steel and solder. It offers up a number of different views that can be extremely helpful depending on what you want to see. The one we're looking at here allows us to go through the controller layer by layer. So we can see the exact density of the capacitors on the trackpad, for example. We can see the rolls in the battery, something that you definitely can't examine safely under normal circumstances. And we can even look inside the rumble motor to see how it's built. That is so cool. We've been having an absolute field day scanning basically everything that'll fit in the machine, like this Buzz Lightyear from the mom and pop tech shop. Ooh, look, there's his two infinity and beyond voice box. Uh, we also did this high heel shoe when we were trying to figure out how to mount an adorable scary mouth to the bottom of it, a ubiquity access point to have a look at their antenna configuration and this power supply to see if we can use the Neptune to non-destructively inspect solder joint quality. The answer is sort of ish, but let's back up a bit. Aren't CT scanners for medical applications and why doesn't this one look like a donut? Well, while the main principles are the same between the LumaField and a medical CT scanner, there's one main difference between the two. In the LumaField, we rotate the object, while in a medical CT scanner, we rotate the scanner itself. Also, those things freaking rip. And for a good reason. Humans are not great at staying still for a very long time, and this is especially true of their heart and their lungs. So a human scanner needs to be able to do a 
full 360 degree scan in a fraction of a second or the motion blur from your organs doing inconvenient things like keeping you alive is gonna ruin the image. Another reason medical CT scans go so fast is radiation. An X-ray machine creates ionizing radiation, which can potentially lead to inconveniences like cancer if you're exposed for too long. So doctors are usually willing to give up some accuracy if it reduces how long a patient has to stay in there. Finally, since humans aren't particularly dense, medical CT scanners also aren't particularly powerful. The Luma field, though, by contrast, is powerful enough to see through steel. So uh, <laughs> do not eat your hand here ever at all. Non-living objects, though, like this screwdriver available on lttstore.com, don't move unexpectedly and can be exposed to x-rays pretty much indefinitely without concern. And the easiest way to keep them in there is floral foam. As the name suggests, it's designed to hold flowers, but it also happens to work great for industrial CT scanning since it's extremely low density makes it virtually invisible in our scans. One note is that it's very important to place your objects at a slight angle because flat surfaces can't be seen if they're parallel to the x-rays. Now that we've got our object secured, we can place it on the table and begin setting up our scan. What we wanna do is line it up as best we can with our x-ray emitter. The x-rays leave here and they go across the machine in a cone shape. So we get the highest detail very close to the emitter right here. Oh, I pumped it with my shoulder. Jeez. We get the highest detail very close to the emitter right here. And as you guys just saw, the table can be reconfigured. It can move up, down, left, right, and closer and farther from the emitter. The the problem with being in close is that we sacrifice maximum object size. So we could do something like this right around here, but if we wanted to scan something as large as Buzz here, we can, but he's gonna have to go way at the back of the chamber and we are going to give up some detail. After the x-rays pass through our object, they hit this piece of carbon fiber right here called the scintillator. The scintillator turns our x-rays into visible light for two reasons. The first reason is that x-rays are famous for going through things, which includes image sensors. I assume that's bad. Yes. Yes, that checks out. And two, image detectors for visible light are cheap. Like budget phones have three of them cheap. So scintillator it is. Anyway, we can guess that the screwdriver is gonna look good right about here. Close the door and give her a look-see. What are the odds I nailed this? Oh, I didn't, but hey, remember this? Neat. Now that we've ensured that we're not gonna cut off our object over the entire rotational range, we're gonna go ahead and set our scan parameters to 10 minutes. This is gonna be a pretty rough quick one. And then we click optimize and start scan. Now, for most of the scans that we do here, the machine is gonna take 900 individual x-rays, slightly rotating the object, then pausing for each exposure. Super quick scans, like the one we're doing right now though, are gonna keep the center table slowly rotating for the entire scan in order to save some time. Hey, it's done! Which, I guess, raises a question. Um, was it safe for us to be standing here while it was doing that? Aren't x-rays, you know, radiation? Okay, well first, I just wanna clarify that although the Luma field does produce ionizing radiation, it's not radioactive. So that means the second the beam is turned off, there is zero radiation from both the machine itself and from anything that was inside it. So the only real concern is preventing x-rays from escaping from the machine while it's on. But as it turns out, that's pretty simple. You just uh, cover the whole thing in lead. So much lead, in fact, that we had to rent a special heavy-duty forklift in order to unload this thing. At the back is three eighths inch lead plating, and then around all the other sides is a quarter inch of lead, all of which is verified during installation to have no radiation leaks. 
There is in fact so much lead around this thing that while the scanner is on, you can stand right beside it and experience a reduction in the amount of radiation that you're receiving because it will block radiation from the sun, the radioactive materials in the ground below you, and even that banana that your colleague is eating. My devious plan to poison Linus is foiled again. And also his insides. Wow, all things considered, the quality of this is pretty okay. Like, obviously, it's not as good as the longer scans, but between the reconstruction and the raw x-rays themselves, there's a good chance that even a quick scan like this can tell us what we want to know. Like, we can see that, oh, a bit is missing. So we managed to spot that, but there's also a lot that this scan can't tell us. Like, you can see the plastic around the bits here is just kind of a mess, and there's no real detail in the ratchet mechanism. So let's try this again, but this time we're going to mess around with the manual settings first. The main reason that the plastic in our first scan looks so strange is a phenomenon called beam hardening. The X-ray source in our luma field produces polychromatic X-rays, which is to say that we have a range of low energy and high energy photons that are getting shot across the scanner. The problem is the low energy photons get absorbed first, while the high energy photons get through, meaning that the first layer of material is always going to show up darker than the last bit of material, which can lead to some of the weirdness that we just saw. There's two main ways around this. The first is to use monochromatic x-rays, where all of the light that is emitted is at the same energy level. But unfortunately, achieving this requires a synchrotron or a linear accelerator. <laughs> Why do those sound so expensive? Because they are. So instead, LumaField simply gets rid of most of the low energy photons by using one of the copper filters that you're gonna see, ah, there we go, on this wheel right here. They range from 0.5 millimeters to six millimeters, depending on how hard you want the beam. The trade-off though, is that the thicker the filter, the less exposed the image is going to be, meaning that you need to increase the scan time. It's actually pretty similar to how an ND filter works on a film camera, which, if you think about it, can actually be said for all of the settings on the Luma field. Let's set up the screwdriver scan again, but manually this time. Exposure time 46 seconds, two and a half millimeter, and scan. Scan. Whatever, it doesn't really matter because we're gonna movie magic this thing. One cooking show trick later, we've got this. There is still a little bit of weirdness in the plastic, but our better exposure settings have given us a dramatically better look inside, especially the metal portions of the screwdriver. We can now see inside the ratchet and we can tell how far the press fit portions are inserted. We can also see exactly where the magnet ended up in the shaft, and we can even see the individual teeth on the ratchet. These are all things that were not as apparent on a quick 10 minute scan. With that said, for good results, you don't always need to spend 12 hours irradiating apart. The screwdriver just happens to be a particularly difficult example thanks to the steel and plastic that are very close together. For an entirely plastic part, you can get excellent results in half an hour, with aluminum parts taking more like four hours and steel. Okay, yeah, anything with steel in it is probably best left overnight. But this raises a big question. Besides just looking really, really cool, what is the point of all of this and who needs one? Well, the most obvious one is looking at the inside of an assembled part for things that you can only see while it's assembled. Like for example, the squish of an O-ring or how much your battery pins are getting compressed once the cover is closed. It's also great for validating injection molding or casting. Like you could check for bubbles inside an alternator casing and you could see the deviation between the finished part and what was originally designed in the software. There is one thing we should clarify though. Although it's unlikely that we'll damage electronics by looking at them in the Luma field, it is possible. After being exposed to ionizing radiation for a couple of hours, bits can flip in flash memory. And if that happens to the wrong bit, whether it's the you know, storage on your phone or the BIOS chip on your GPU, whatever that is, is gonna be no worky. 
Fortunately, Lumafield has done the research on this and they've got a helpful article on how to calculate safe exposure levels to ensure that our phones and our GPUs come out as happy as clams. As for exactly what we are gonna be using the Lumafield for, well, I don't know guys, the sky is kind of the limit here. Or well, roughly the size of a basketball is the, the real limit. Oh, and also materials. Um, gold, it turns out, is just too dense to blast through. But neither of those limitations have stopped us from making good use of it already. Things we've scanned so far include this bread Saurus prototype that we looked at to validate the factory glue application, this massive Phillips head bit that we printed on our Rapidia metal 3D printer, the Lumafield allowed us to verify both that the dimensions are correct and also that the part is mechanically sound outside and in. Oh, we used it to look at the hinge mechanism of the Pixel Fold. We scanned a handful of computer mice, which often you can't see the inside of without destroying. And this scan of a GPU is already live on the LTT Labs website, giving us a great look at the processor die size, the memory chip layout, and the cooler design without needing to remove the factory heatsink, which could invalidate future thermal testing. What's really turning heads though, is not the functionality. CT scanners have existed for decades. It's the price. Now it is a subscription. I know, I know, but the Neptune starts at $75,000 a year and includes their Voyager software that handles all of the reconstruction. That sounds really expensive because it is, but it starts to sound a lot more reasonable when you consider that a lot of industrial CT scanners are going to require a full-time technician to run them who's going to put you over $75,000 a year before you actually buy a quarter million dollar machine. Also, I've said tons of times in the past that while I don't like subscriptions, I don't mind them as long as they give me the option to buy the machine outright. And Lumafield does. The price is, uh, well, if you have to ask, but it's intended for clients who are working with sensitive information and who want to do all of their processing in-house. That actually feels like it'd be a really cool future video, building oh, like a yeah. GPU farm to freaking process this thing. Anyway. It feels a little strange saying we're gonna have a link below to where to get one of these for yourself, but some of you for sure work in R&D or in manufacturing and are probably already thinking about how much time this thing could save you. And then I guess for everyone else, I don't know, we'll link some of our scans so you can check those out. And in the comments below, let us know what you wanna see us scan next. Just like I'll be scanning the horizon for our sponsor, Thorum. Thorum has been in business for over a decade, handcrafting elegant bands and rings out of rare materials. With rings made out of titanium, ironwood, World War II rifle stocks, and even ethically sourced antlers, they've got a ring for every taste. Don't eat them though. Each ring comes with a free Thorum silicone activity band and an American walnut wood ring box. Their minimalist watches feature the same unique materials, like Hawaiian koa wood and Gibeon meteorite, you know, like the kind from space. And they even offer necklaces now to match the same minimalist and premium vibes. Best of all, they ship to most areas worldwide and all of their products are covered with their lifetime warranty. With over 10 years of experience and over 5,000 happy customers, Thorum is there for you, whether you need a watch, a wedding band, or just a cool looking ring. Check them out at thorum.com and use code LTT to get 20% off. If you guys enjoyed this video, check out the last time we got a super expensive piece of test equipment by watching our EMI chamber video. Actually, we've got some upgrades to share on that front. Uh, sometime in the near future, you probably don't recognize any of that gear on the table outside it.